All right, guys. Okay, we should be live now, finally. I was talking to myself for the past five minutes. I thought we were live, but apparently we're not. So, <laughs> sorry about that. And let me know, guys, is the music good? My sound is good? Everything is good? And we'll come back to all of you. So, for those of you who are new here, we are recreating some of Leon Tucker. Uh, concept art is actually based on his concept art uh, in Unreal Engine so today we're working on this in the last stream we worked on the city and soon I have recorded the complete process and make a condensed video of the process from the beginning to the end so stay tuned hit that subscribe button and stuff and Andy hey welcome buddy it's good to see you here how are you doing well nice then things should be working well all right we made a happy accident here and we were trying to make that happy accident look good so we need to apply they're both smooth hmm we can play with the shape here a little let's add symmetry for the other side trying to make the shapes work together you know it's good to see you Andy I like the one before more to be honest my guys so I think I removed it by mistake or deleted it I don't know where did it go oh there there it is okay I think the music is a little loud So which one should I choose? This guy or this guy? Let's see if we can remove this support loop. Is it gonna still look nice? Yeah, I think now it's more organic. Rhino, hello, how are you buddy? Hope you're doing well. Welcome guys. Welcome. Yeah, I like this one more. But what I, I think is still like missing some order. I like this. I would like to have some of this here. You know? I'm great, thank you. I'm very good. Trying to to make this scene here look better so so far I made like box gave it some noise assigned the grass mod uh, texture from uh, Quixel added more vegetation in the back and now I'm trying to put like their uh, planter so I'm great I made a happy accident here that I liked it looked more futuristic and it it went well with the actual work that Leon Tucker did, so I was very happy with that. Hey, Dark Pixel, Maher, my man, how are you, buddy? It's good to see you too. So many amazing people here. Ray Ray. Okay, Ray Ray, I will see you very soon, my man. Thank you for uh, showing up today. And Oleg is one of my favorite artists too. I was talking um, earlier, but my stream crashed. Dark Pixel, uh, there is a concept art based on, on Leon Stalker. This is Leon Stalker work. I took his his, uh, his uh, work, basically. It's for a larger project we are working on. More information coming soon. It's a very exciting project. So this is the main concept art. And 
I'm re not remaking it, but based on the 3D models he provided and all and the ideas, we are turning this from uh, static pictures, like the co lovely concept art it is, to something that is slightly uh, real time, so in Unreal Engine. So that's what we're doing. And now I was thinking, I was trying to work on these shrubs to, 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 I like green stuff when, when it comes to, to projects. So I was working on this backside and I was experimenting if we do all of these here in the background or something, S slowly getting somewhere, but I thought, uh, we could add something so they can sit on and we were working here. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. It's not my work. It's Leon Stucker. Uh, it's 90% of everything you see. It's his work. Like all these uh, elements, the the art, all of it. It's his. I only did is just retopologizing everything, cleaning up the geometry and preparing it for uh, for real time. And yeah, converting it from Cinema 4D to to 3ds Max so I can be comfortable working on it. I'm trying to add my touch. If you, since you didn't see the other project and many of you guys here, the main city, let me show you the main city real quick before we come back to the auditorium. Extremely interesting architecture. Leon Tucker's architecture is like one of my favorite. So let me show you real quick his work on Art Station. I've been his fan for so many years. And I feel absolutely honored to work on, on, on his project here and making it in inside Unreal Engine. And his workflow ex is extremely, extremely, extremely interesting because he, he first uh, starts in virtual reality, do brush strokes with graffiti sketch and whatnot, then take that to Cinema 4D, do his render, then from Cinema 4D to Photoshop to just finalize the, the concept he's working on. And... I've just been fan of this work for so long and yeah, you can see the brush strokes on some of his work here, you know, on, on uh, in graffiti sketch or uh, what do we call it? The other one, tilt brush, for example. I don't know if he used tilt brush, but they, all these VR painting software are the same. How concerned are you with the poly count usually? None. <laughs> I am not concerned in any way. The main goal is to achieve something that looks very nice because we're using this for a uh, film. So we will be uh, rendering this with the sequencer once it's finished. So we don't really care about the po poly count. And yeah, in the last stream, we started working on the city. And let, let me show you this screenshot here. Or here. Yeah, let's say this one. So this is the main concept where is pure ref pure ref where you at there is pure ref so yeah taking moving stuff from from uh, photos to something that's slightly alive because it's unreal engine after all there is still so much work to do but so far i am satisfied with where we at so that's that and yeah, his approach is like also futuristic. This guy, he's like the future but living with us today. And this is supposed to be a YouTubean city. I was watching one of his streams on Kitbash. So Kitbash 3D Leon. He were talking more about his process and how he works and, and like in general how he sees stuff. You know, and it was extremely interesting uh, video to learn from here. So let me share that with you if you are interested in his in his workflow. Amazing video. So Leon and the guy guys from Kitbash talking about uh, how he designed, and he were working on the Utopia cover. So if you are familiar with Kitbash, Kitbash 3D, uh, Utopia. He were in that uh, stream, he were talking about his process in making this, which is extremely interesting the way he works. Yes, and today we're doing this. Well, not this, but we're the auditorium. And yeah, <laughs> very interesting stuff. Here's the aerial shot that is supposed to be when it's finished close to this. So we still have some work to do in these areas, as you can see. 
but slowly but surely we're getting there and today we are working on the auditorium here so i was focused on this part of the image where we have some vegetation and i thankfully i have some also creative freedom where i should not change much but do as i see fit so i was thinking these guys needs a place to sit on thank you buddy i'm glad you like it so without further ado let's get back to max the boring stuff the 3d modeling part so as you can see i'm not concerned about topology poly count no nothing <laughs> so we need to make this look more interesting so like i want it to have the same flow of the complete uh, design but i think we are kind of getting there so i'm thinking if we assign an ffd modifier after this symmetry and you know change stuff but I need to be careful as well because this should be behind the symmetry and let's hide the turbo mode for now yeah look look what I did here so nope I think I should be working only with the edit poly modifier. So if you want to look at the cage, let's bring back the things we care about again. Oh, let me read the messages, guys. Sorry. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, how concerned? No, I'm not concerned with the poly. How is the process from Cinema 4D to 3ds Max? The other way around, it's pretty painstaking. That's a great question, Andy. Uh, honestly, at the very first, I tried exporting directly from Cinema 4D to 3ds Max, but it there were so many missing meshes because uh, in Cinema 4D there is like cloner objects and whatnot, and I am like I am I have no idea what Cinema 4D is. I'm pretty bad with it. I just know how to navigate the viewport and do some basic stuff. So I thought, all right, what if I export everything from Cinema 4D to Unreal Engine, and in Unreal Engine I export everything back to 3ds Max, and that was actually my workflow. So I don't know if I can show you here. I have merged. Yeah, so in, in, uh, no, wait, I hope I can find it. I exported everything to Cinema 4D, uh, from Cinema 4D to Max, to Unreal. And in Unreal here, I selected all of these meshes because they look exactly like uh, the ones in, in Cinema 4D, which, which was great for me. I merged all of them. So here's the merged file. And I sent this back to 3ds Max. And in 3ds Max, you can see the difference. For example, I made these slightly, you know, uh, if we want to compare it with the current design, more organic as it's supposed to be and clean up the mesh. So the mesh, it, it was not really optimized for real time, uh, you know, because it's supposed to be it does its purpose greatly in, in uh, concept art. So I have to clean up the mesh, separate it, uh, do some layers, do some naming. And that's that was the workflow I did. And I have recorded all of that, actually. So just stay tuned for the upcoming videos. I think in 10, 15 days, I should release videos on this because right now I'm busy working on the master class and the master class. There are so many things coming. So also stay tuned. So yeah, that was the workflow. It was like this. Cinema 4D, 3D Unreal, then 3DS Max, you know? Hey, Amal, it's good to see you, my man. It looks like a zebra sculpt, which is super interesting. But I'm never learning ZBrush. I'm learning Blender. I need your help with Blender, Amal. How are you with the geometry nodes? 
I was watching this tutorial on the geometry nodes. Let me show you real quick. In this video, to... we're gonna build a procedure. So, actually, guys, I am learning Blender now because I thought geometry nodes are extremely useful. So, this, for example, uh, could be the background Using. buildings in in uh, these guys here in this part of the city. So these parts so still experimenting with these things so yeah that's the beauty of it that's this is the type of projects i really love to work on full of r d experimentation mistakes and new stuff interesting stuff uh can you send tips on textile density absolutely um but I have nothing on textile density at the moment to say of. Do you have uh, any specific question on textile density? But to be honest, I can't help you much in textile density because I don't specialize in, in working or doing things for, for games for a very long time. Everything I'm doing is for art fees and uh, film. But I would love to give some tips if I had any right now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Dark Vixal, Maher, my man. Thank you for uh, showing up. I will see you soon, buddy. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Yeah, Blender is absolutely amazing. But, Amal, I'm taking a note on textile density. I got asked this question multiple times. So, why not? We should do, we should do something about that, right? At the moment, I I don't I don't uh, with like my projects for the past two three years. I never cared about textile density. I just go with whatever looks good, which is a disaster if if this was for a game or especially for VR. But um, I go with whatever values that just visually look good. Regarding that, I see you soon, uh, Maher. Take care, buddy. Okay, both of you guys are on Discord, so let's have a discussion on textile density on Discord as well. I'd love to make a video on that, and I would learn from you, so that's that's awesome. So let's continue making this look more futuristic. So what if we... I kind of like this, when we drag it like this. But I don't like this. So let's see. Can't get rid of this. Adding some swift loops to define my uh, my mesh, and I think this is good. Perhaps we can add another swift loop. On, on the side I wish I could help you with textile density Amal but I, I am a noob right now so <laughs> I can't so with this yeah some sharpness on the edge I think would be nice Perhaps another one here. Like so. And we should be good. I like this and I like how how it goes like this 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 flow. Perhaps we can increase it, so let's see what can we do here. So if we select this part, toggle the final view, awesome, 
the discussions we are having on Discord are absolutely amazing. For any of you guys who is not with us on Discord, we're almost we are at 800 uh, members. I keep saying almost. So join us. It's a great community. Uh, what do you guys think? I think this is cool. I think this is cool. But let's try one final thing. What if we do some chamfering here? Nah, no, that's a bad idea. I should stop messing with this. It looks good. So let's just move it to the top. And... Let's give it a material. So it have two material IDs. One for the sides and one for the floor. So that also can be done by selecting this so ignore back facing then select by angle so we can select all of this quickly you know and then set a material id of two so we have two material ids now one final What if we do this? Slightly define this part, you know? Yeah, I think this looks better. So let's collapse to here. Let's keep this at high poly. Not 100,000 polygons, let's keep it like this. And let's give it a name, S for static mesh and planter I'm gonna collapse to here I'm gonna disable turbo smooth for now and let's unwrap this real quick or should we let data smith do it for us let's see if we can unwrap it real quick my unwrapping muscles are so bad at this point so let's apply UVW map move the map channel to 2 for the light maps and this is what it looks like so if we select by angle this part right click break this part break this here break and let's pack our UVs first and let's do a quick peel this looks good looks not bad and this part here so parts like this they should be broken into multiple pieces so each corner should be its own thing so one two three break it tips on making light map uvs second two channel how much padding should i use um Padding, I, I used to care about padding, but now I just keep enough distance between my meshes. Uh, enough padding, I mean, so we don't have light, light leaks. So padding of 0, 0, 005, 5, 5 pixels, 3 pixels should be fine. But that's for Archphase. Um, depending on the complexity, complexity of your mesh, uh, see... Uh, you should how can I say for example if I want the very best light map bake on this mesh 
I would actually divide it into at least two parts. I would completely remove this part because this part is wasted, you know? And if this part after the turbo smooth, if it, it's not like with it, I would also separate it or put something around it. So uh, you should find the balance between the detached meshes and how what's visible and what's not. If you don't want to, lead, to delete this part, what you can also do is selecting it like so. Uh oh, did I mess up my... I think I messed up. <laughs> no problem. Let's control Z, control Z. If we can do control Z, no problem. Let's disable this. I would select this part and make it as small as possible. So because it's just waste wasted. And regarding padding, there is like really no rules on that. As long as there is enough good distance between between uh, between your uh, UV islands, so they don't leak to each other. As long as they don't overlap. The best tip I can give is try to utilize this area as much as possible. You know don't don't leave too many uh, empty spaces just try to, to utilize it fill it as much as possible so it can like be fully utilized and no nothing is, is gone to waste this is why i would delete this or make it very small so it can so i can make space for the other uh, parts that we, we will actually see i hope this uh, this is useful uh, amal so let's again make our selections select this break it select this break it select this break it and then we can increase our threshold a little let's say 45 yeah 45 looks good all right break it and then the other side select it and break it so mapping let's pack the uvs let's peel everything and this guy it also needs to be selected on the sides like so yeah it exactly depends on the light map resolution and the light map resolution I use for many of my meshes is like no more than 1, 1k. And yeah, basically that. And if there is something, just you can use whatever light map resolution you want, by the way. It does not have to be power of 2, uh, if you know what I mean. Why is this like this? So it does not have to be like 128. 256 512 no it can be any number you like the light map resolution all right and finally this part the Unwrapping tools in 3ds Max are really not that good. What light map resolution you use on average, for example, for one meter by one meter piece? Um, I start when I see the way I approach light map resolutions because my most of the work I do is for uh, archfiz and film. I start as low as possible. So everything is set on 64 for the light map resolution and in areas where I do have shadows and whatnot, I start increasing uh, slowly only on the on specific areas. So I never use something more than 1k because it's just overkill. I, I, I detach my meshes to, to work perfectly with something like between 512 and 1k, no more than that. Oh, Ryzen UV is one of my favorite tools, but uh, I don't have it installed now, and I'm just trying to do something real quick. But Andy, Ryzen is one of the best tools for 
ايفرج تو 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 انراب هاو ايفر ام تو ليزي نو تو انستول ات ان انراب فيد يو نو وات اي مين بس يا اف اي دونت وونت تو سفر وذ ذس رايزون فور ذا وين سي ويل ذس this so what is this part for parts like this I just do mapping flat and mapping so it can like look as in best way possible so actually we can do that on every island we just broke and let's pack our UVs again Rhizome UV is a time-saving machine when it comes to unwrapping meshes. I totally love it. Let's decrease the padding a little. Not the best padding or packing, but again, we are experimenting, so I don't want to spend too much time here. So I will add my unwrap UVW. And <clears throat> I'm not gonna use my script because I need to find the exact location for this. So the easiest way to export this is actually just do it with data math here. So planter. Let's go back to Unreal. UV squares in Blender. UV squares. I'm going to check that out. Thank you, Amal. Because I'm learning Blender now more and more. So there should be then the GitHub version. Yosh. Nice. Do you recommend UV squares for Blender? Hey, William. It's good to see you, buddy. How are you? You didn't use Max in years? Really? <laughs> wow. I forgot to add a UVW map on my mesh here, so I didn't do unwrapping for years. <laughs> Amal, thank you for the recommendation on Blender uh, UV squares. I'm going to check this out. I'm still learning the basics, but slowly but surely getting there. So let's just add a stupid UVW box. And let's export this again. How are you, William? Are you doing well? It's good to see you, man. I love your uh, two minutes uh, Thursday, uh, Tuesdays. Very informative tutorials and short. Amazing stuff. So let's... Should we do this? I don't like this song. Doing great, thanks. I'm glad you're doing great, buddy. I moved over to Maya at the moment. I went into the film industry. I do not need to get on the Blender. <laughs> I do need to get on the Blender hype train now, though. I agree. The hype train of Blender is pretty good. I started learning Blender, like, taking it much more seriously when... Uh, when uh, they introduced the new uh, geometry nodes. So for a project like this, I was thinking, okay, geometry nodes like this, there is so much you can do with them. Especially, I'm trying to achieve something similar, like to, to you know what I mean? Like, actually, wait, this. I think these, with the geometry nodes, can be achieved once you set it up right, for example, you can do 
millions of variations in in matter of seconds so that's why i started learning blender as well and blueprints too to create the bridges and whatnot uh andy and rapping i was thinking of uh a tutorial series for uh, unwrapping furniture and whatnot like for archface and calling it unwrapping and chill you know i completely agree it's like a meditative process makes you angry sometimes of using something like 3ds max but it is good it is meditative maya how did you find maya william but i should not i should stop learning tools and focus on just few but it's good to see people from all kinds of backgrounds. That's amazing. I haven't worked on Max, but love working with Blender. I love Blender so far. And I am learning Blender from uh, Jama uh, Jorab Jorabev. His tutorials on Blender and how fast he creates art and like the look dev scenes in Blender. It, it blows my mind and I'm learning Blender thanks to Jama, you know, his tutorials on Blender are pretty, pretty amazing. And why, what I also love about Blender is how easy it is to, to make th scenes like this. So real quick, the, I, I love space as you guys know. So it's really easy to generate like pictures like this on, on Blender and like experiment with it and do cool stuff. So Blender for the win. <laughs> <laughs> but I am for when it comes to 3D modeling, for some reason I'm still very comfortable with 3ds Max. I think it's because I've been using it for so many years now. For now, geometry nodes it's good for scattering. Yes, I think many of these tutorials I saw on Blender nodes are for scattering. But there's so so much potential on on the geometry nodes. I'm pretty excited about what we'll bring on table next. William. That looks awesome, thank you. Blender has come a long yeah, yeah. Blender has come a long way in recent years. I remember making fun of <laughs> We all used to make fun of Blender, that's that's the fun part, you know. <laughs> because it was bad, but now, yeah, it's damn crazy awesome stuff. Absolutely. Maya is a love-hate relationship, it's awesome but also terrible. I uh, everyone agrees with you. Everyone hates Maya, but it is the go-to tool in all major pipeline film and games as well, I believe. 100%. Agree, William? Nowadays, all the other DCCs can learn from Blender. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Did you see the new remeshing tools in 3ds Max 2022 and all that stuff? Someone is copying someone and whatnot. But yeah, it's a good to have a tool, you know, at least that open source if you want to learn 3D and get in the industry you don't have like to pay $300, $200 a month for a license Blender and yeah 2.8 since that release I was like wow we should we need to learn this and I think the main reason I love Blender so far is that you can just like Jama one of his like I think he, he mentioned the same you can do this so you like you eliminate the complete the user interface there is no user interface you can even hide these if you want and you can still access everything you want so if, especially with like hard ops and whatnot so honestly working with no distractions like this in blender and the ability to do everything and the fact that it opens in five seconds i was like wow i need to learn blender because sometimes my uh, max to open it needs to like two minutes three minutes and like ah, I don't want to wait yeah the procedural terrain tools in blender are cool Amal but I still prefer to use a uh, word creator it's my favorite tool to create terrains I think there is nothing more powerful for from a uh, word creator when it comes to generating terrains uh, let me also if you want to do it even like the the laziest way let me show you this uh, on this level here I went to Google Earth took a screenshot of like one part of Netherlands 
and made a plane in inside the uh, inside of Unreal Engine and with the modeling tools I was able to do some deformation and just like that I had like a full terrain on on uh, my city here so that was also fun experimentations so many tools man as long as they work they achieve what you're looking for then then good and the the love hate relationship I think it exists with every tool not only Maya I can say the same about 3ds Max. <laughs> yeah, for lazy ways, absolutely. Especially when you want something very fast, you don't want to use multiple tools. The terrain, uh, procedural terrain tools in Blender are really impressive. Really fast. And that's what I love Blender. You can make stuff really fast. And I think that's one of the main reasons people are running Unreal Engine, because you can do very fast things in Unreal. Uh, as well uh, quick and dirty that's that's the favorite thing for everyone so let's fix these trees here a little so make them fit like so I'm gonna invert my selection so select I should have a shortcut for uh, Invert selection. I think it's pretty pretty handy. Let's see if we can do that now so editor preferences Invert selection Control I Yeah, or alt I Control I should be good. So Yeah, that's a useful shortcut invert selection So let's also do this and guys do you know if there is a way to so in max let's say we have all these trees right and let me show you what I mean so right now when I'm trying to scale in in uh, Unreal it's scaling everything according to the middle here but and the same can be done in max as well like this but in max we have when we go to there is an option here use selection center when we do it another way we can actually scale these meshes uh, individually so i wonder if there is similar way to do it also in in unreal engine it would be incredible you know so we cannot cycle anything here maya's biggest strength is how good it is for the pipelines yes and pushing data through the major productions managing large complex scenes is pretty great i 100 percent agree on this but for modeling <laughs> anything is better than maya i perhaps disagree but i know <laughs> i know an artist who who do hard surface modeling with maya and it, if you look at his art and like oh shit, i need to learn modeling only with maya but Perhaps you're right, never used Maya much. Use it only to work with animations to bring them to, to Unreal. But no more than that. <laughs> Notepad. I don't think there is a way to change the selection pivot in scale in Unreal Engine. Not that I am aware of anyway. I don't think either, I always dreamed of this, but perhaps someday we will find a way for it it could be really handy but what can we do then is selecting as groups like this and then just scale them individually like so uh, yes I think I made a mistake uh, aligning all these without uh, without having this stand but I love this stand now I think it looks good with with what we have right now here yeah and I like this happy accident here how they start small then grow perhaps then start small again 
think that's pretty handy. So let's do that again. Let's go to the tab, invert our selection, then deselect. But thank you for the answer, anyway, Will William. I appreciate it, man. And thank you for showing up. You just made my day. I'm totally honored, buddy. Let's do this. Did I lose my camera for a second? Let's check. No, all is good. this Let's move them around like so I think my next project William I was looking for uh, some art on Halo. I I love your Halo uh, cinematic. It it like it's one of the best things I have ever seen inside Unreal Engine. And as a guy who likes to design environments, I I was thinking one of my next projects should be. I I was totally impressed by this image today. And I am brainstorming now ideas to des to design something like this. Uh, inside of uh, Unreal Engine with hopefully the geometry nodes in Blender if I learned how to do them so yeah I learned so much from this project here so especially when like uh, making uh, bigger bigger scale series it's really fun doing this stuff inside of Unreal Engine working from home has its perks absolutely yes <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. I'm very glad you're here today. I have decided to to start the habit of like start to stream. Uh, well, today is the first day, but I would like to to stream more often. It just forces you to work, you know, because some of the cons from working from home is also sometimes in my case not getting the job done. So I think by doing live streams more often, it would be fun. And what? One of the things I did, I used to have two monitors and now I have only one monitor to, to help me focus more on what I am doing. It's ultra wide monitor, like I have the chat on this side and then sharing this side. But uh, when I had two monitors, I used to, to always put YouTube on the side or stream or something and sometimes I forget to work. <laughs> but the perks are good. Uh, Halo has some seriously... Yes, yes, the concept art of Halo is absolutely incredible. Uh, art of Halo books. Well, thank you for this. I, I'm going to, to check that out. Let's see. Art of Halo. Oh, yeah. I love art books. Nice. Man, the best memories ever are in Halo. I, I actually only played one or two Halo games. I feel extremely guilty for not playing the rest of the games, but I think since now all of them are available on PC, it should be the next thing on my list, Halo. For now, I am totally uh, mind blown with the, with the art of uh, Mirror's Edge, Catalyst. Uh, I'm playing this for the third time now be because like it's kind of similar to the project I'm working on right now but the next on the list is actually Halo so let me let me add this to my to-do list art of Halo thank you for the recommendation William I really appreciate it you are the man so let's do this I think I should skip this part here 
not focus on it as much but let's select randomly these guys scale them on the on the Z and let's check our main shot so if we look uh oh yes I thought it's crashed I don't think it's bad. I actually like 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 how how this is turning, uh, you know. Obviously, we need to to do some polishing, and I would even try. So let's go to let mode and do this. I think I should get the. Halo Master Chief Collection, right? So let's do this. 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 The problem or the thing I never played all Halo games is I never had a console, and when I played the games, I think it was. 2008 2007 and I had like very 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 bad uh, computer just like all of us started oh, wait whoa three chill just a little buddy thank you yeah uh, I had a friend who came over last year and he taught me two things he he taught me actually three things the first thing is to have all my desktop icons go away so i can have like super clean desktop the second thing he taught me actually completely changed my life it's a uh, it's a uh, journaling so i started journaling daily for since since i met that guy and the third thing he taught me is uh, try to turn off one monitor for at least few hours a day four hours which is like enough to 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 get so much done and uh, work with one monitor and all of these have been like life-changing for me master chief collection all the halo games nice except for halo 5 oh well let's see is Halo 5 is not out yet, I believe, right? Or is it? I am a noob. There is a version coming soon. What happened? I hope I didn't do something to the mic give me a second guys the air conditioner so hot on this time. Halo 5 has been out since 2015. Ah, the infinite, yes, yes. Well, thank you. Uh, every time I, I want to, to design something from a game, I get it, play it, get inspired, and go for that. Um, and since I saw your Halo art, I was like, oh my god, I need to play Halo. I need to do my duty as a PC gamer, you know? Not Xbox game, <laughs> but like just play it. So thank you for doing that. And I can't wait to play it and to get the art books. And I have always been fascinated with, with Halo art, uh, like as a sci fi lover, you know, and space lover. So it should be a sin not playing the game. Especially look at this guy, it's like, wow. What fruits do you eat in Istanbul? Uh, apples are my favorite, and 
I don't know what is the other bananas and there is something similar to apples but not apples. Let me let me remember its name. It's ijas in Arabic. Pir. This is my favorite, one of my favorite fruits. So these are my top three main uh, fruits every day. Apples and pear and bananas. <laughs> I love fruits too. Healthy. And they keep you full. Because what I hate about food, when you eat, you get tired. Okay, I like uh, low, then high, then perhaps we can do this, make this large. Harun? What? I want to introduce you guys to Harun. Come here, boy. You should say hi. What's up? Are you a good boy? Hmm? <laughs> He's a good boy. So let's do the same on this side, make these smaller on the ends, you know, and make them bigger in the middle. So let's do this. Let's do this. Ah, just like this. Let's borrow this, put it here. Hey! Docorex, it's been a while. It's good to see you, buddy. How are you? <laughs> William, yeah, I had this cat for three years. So, question: When doing Archfield stuff, don't you miss like walking, moving through your scene in 3ds Max, like using WASD keys like Unreal has? Uh, um. So, in in 3ds Max, the funny thing, I almost never. Uh, so there is an option, I believe, that when we press. The arrow keys I remember in the perspective view we could move, yeah, like this. But it just felt so unto un un intuitive in, in, in Max. Uh, adjusting the speeds and whatnot. And I don't know, but in Max I almost never never move with the with the with the arrow keys like Unreal Engine. Which is funny. I should do that more. In Blender I move uh, more more you know, uh, with that tool, I forgot what what was the yeah. It's like this. In Blender, I love moving like this. It's so good. Whoa! But I still need to learn it. I wish everyone just have the same controls like Unreal Engine here. It's just extremely intuitive to 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 move around stuff around your scenes inside Unreal Engine, whether you want to orbit, you want to zoom out, you're gonna do tab left, right, it's so fast, it's, yeah, so it's almost, I have to see the project first in Unreal Engine, so I can know if it's good or not, but that's a good question, buddy, in Blender you can do that with shift tilde, I think that is, or control tab, I still need to do my... Ah, yeah, Chef Tilda, yeah, this one. Amal, I can ask you this, by the way. In Blender, when we press 0 to go to camera, is there a way to move with the camera? So, let's say I am the camera mode ma now. I can only scroll in and out. But let's say... So, here we are in Unreal Engine. I'm gonna make a new camera. Right? And if I am in this camera in Unreal, I can move this camera around, right? Unless I decide to quit and then do whatever I want. However, in Blender, when I want to move around with that camera, I can't. So, is there a way to lock this so I can move the camera wherever I like? Because... 
I wish I knew how to do that. I'm used to like always to move the camera to find the perfect shot. I know that we can use G on the camera then move it around, you know, but honestly, it does not feel intuitive uh, to me or it's because of my bad habits or good habits in moving around always with the with the camera on. Yes, yeah, please tell me. Hey, Nildo Isa, how are you? Do you have any good tips on using baked lighting with dynamic objects? I'm having issues mostly with the shadows and interactions. By the way, William Faucher, thank you for your tips. William Faucher is the man. When it comes to baked lighting and dynamic objects, uh, the main tip is don't use GPU light mass because GPU light mass, it does not calculate, uh, what do we call them? As good as the CPU light mass. So what is one of the things GPU light mass is very, 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 very good at is actually calculating the volumetric light map uh, cell sizes here. For some reason, the GPU light mass does not do a good job calculating these. Uh, therefore, all movable objects look like really out of place. So, unfortunately, if you want to integrate dynamic objects, for me so far, the experience have been always using the CPU light marks. They look just so much better. I hope this helps uh, your, your uh, question. And it's one of the things on my R&D list, how can I make like dynamic objects look good within the GPU light mass uh, because you know we need dynamic objects in our uh, projects <laughs> so Amal yes yes you can lock press N in the viewport uh oh are, are you telling me it's just a button so wait press N in the viewport then view there is an option to lock so view <gasps> no wait so here's zero to view to my camera and local camera so this should be the guy right and if so okay I'm hmm. I don't know I'm, I'm using the middle mouse button to to look around is that correct or can be done in other way Yeah, Neldo, unfortunately with the GPU light mass, it does not do a great job in in, uh, in the volumetric light map uh, uh, detail cells. And if you want to like to get more into this, you can search for Unreal Engine. The volumetric light maps to learn more about these options and what they do in the official documentation. There is so much uh, you can learn from. So you see like they use there's the sparse volume lighting samples this is the old method and like even with CPU light mass they used to look so bad but with the new method the volumetric light maps it it just looks so much better hey Chris how are you it's good to see you Chris my man good morning all right so switching back to to blender Ah, view lock. Okay, okay, okay. So. <gasps> oh my god. Thank you. Oh, this is good. I have been struggling to find this. I googled it everywhere and I was like, why, why this does not exist in Blender, you know? Thank you. Here's a heart for you. <laughs> nice i'm gonna use blender 10 times more now thank you so much amal this is so helpful this will change my life do you know that just wait for the upcoming blender stuff then this is amazing thank you guys thank you amal i appreciate it amal is the blender master thank you bro nice yes this is so good okay since we are at it Wait, now to unlock, we do this. Nice, incredible. So, uh, I don't know in, in Blender, 
how can I say? So, is there a way to change? I am sure there is. So, in, in Unreal Engine, let's say, I have this mannequin or any actor in my scene. He, if I press Alt, then left mouse button, I can orbit around it easily. But I struggle to do that in, in, uh, in Blender. So here's Unreal Engine, for example. And here is 3ds Max. You can easily orbit around uh, objects. But in Blender, it's kind of hard. So is there a way to make it easier to orbit around, around meshes? Yeah, Blender is massive. William, I will see you soon, man. Thank you for showing up. I really appreciate it. See you soon. Looking forward for your streams. Yeah, I still struggle with the with the Blender uh, orbit, but that's fine. One thing at a time. Let's do this and let's take this texture, put it here. Could use some grass later. So in Blender plus dot in the number to focus on selected. Yeah, I know this, which is one of my favorite shortcuts as well. But I think I messed up something. So if I do this. Ha, there we go. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Awesome, bro. Thank you so much. This is so good. But I think the only thing I need to be aware of, if I have this selected on camera, it's it's gonna be harder. So unless I select my cube like this. Ah. So when when we do that, we should not lock on, on the on this. So that's good to know. That's amazing. Go to preferences, navigation, orbit around selection. Let's do that as well. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you. I always wanted to learn Blender and now you're just boosting my uh, journey. So orbit, turntable, yes, I believe that's what I want. And I do have it already selected. So if we disable this, what would happen? So it would rotate around the screen. If we have selected, nothing happens. But if we do this, ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I have this enabled by default, I guess, earlier. This is one of the most important uh, short, uh, ticks. Thank you, Nildo. This is a great one too. I completely forgot about this. So, what is trackball then? Ah, okay. The more you learn. The more you learn. Dolly, yes. Vertical, yes. Nice. Let's go back to Unreal. Finish this. Make a copy. Make it smaller. Smaller. Get the grass. Put it here. And these can be slightly integrated. Okay, now if you look back here, the fog might be way too much, so we can reduce that a little. I think we can change 
this building, so... I agree, I was using... Yeah, I had it selected. <laughs> but thanks for the tip anyway. It's a great, good to remind... Uh, as a reminder. Uh, orbit around selection. <laughs> I pulled my hair in Blender. Turns out it has it that well. Yes. Orbit around selection is sacred. You can't... You cannot live without it. I think maybe... If we have... Bridge. What about you, Amal? By the way, what are your favorite fruits in uh, India? Which city you were in? Can you remind me, please? Where is, can I select my line? Ah, I need to press G. Okay, so let's do this. Jonathan Martino, my man. How are you, buddy? Welcome to the stream. Um, well, for all of you who are new here, and you, Jonathan, we have art based on uh, Leon Tucker, great guy, one of my heroes. In the last stream, we did this uh, small city, and today we are doing uh, this auditorium. So, we're trying to make our Unreal Engine scene look as good as what Leon did in his concept art. So basically that's what we're doing today. Nildo, come to Turkey man, it's a beautiful country. I originally come from Syria. I had to leave the country because of the war like 10 years ago. I lived in Algeria for 5 years and then in Turkey for 5 years and I think so far these are the best 5 years on, in my life. But sometimes I get tired of some bureaucracy stuff but I think that's only natural. Turkey is a beautiful country, it's really nice. You should visit it. Where do you come from Nildo? Mangoes, orange, I love oranges. Custard, apple, water, you have, you love so much. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, Amal, you have, you love so many fruits. I like how healthy you are, man. It's good. Being healthy is good. That's the spirit. I think this bridge is not designed to be scaled three times so let's get rid of it for now and let's take a look again at our composition see what can we improve and what can we delete um, we still can do small improvements on this part so there are some areas that are a little empty that we could improve a little I believe Let's make the camera slightly slower, so when you go back a little like so. It's a pleasure to meet you, Nildo. Mozambique. Nice. Nice. What I love about the internet is you can meet people from around the world. And our community is like, wow. What about you, Jonathan? Where do you come from? It's good to have you guys. A 
let's make these slightly smaller and slightly bigger larger hey we have neighbors here so that's point zero two eight This is way too large. Hey Jonathan, thank you so much my man, I really appreciate it and welcome to the stream Mexico Noise I love Mexican food and Nil Nildo, speaking of Turkish food if you, you I think you tried it by now it's uh, Lahmacun, the Turkish pizza if you know it it's great <laughs> We have that in Syria too. However, if you have Syrian restaurant around you, you should try the Syrian food. In my opinion, in my hum humble opinion, Syrian food is better. <laughs> Hummus, falafel, Lebanese food as well. I think we have way too much noise going on, so... Set dressing is like what we're doing now is one of the most time consuming things. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry too. Should eat soon. Let me show you this. Um shawarma I think this is ah, it's just killing me looking at it. it this is one of the best things ever uh, the shawarma it's like <laughs> this is the stuff this is the stuff oh well I at some point I would like to upload some Syrian food tutorials on the channel then what do you think about that? <laughs> it's kinda hard to get this part right because it's closer to the camera or it's because I just can't get it right they look so much similar so we need to start uh, we need to start rotating uh, things randomly a little. But actually, wait. So sometimes it's better to. Let's do this. Move this like on the Z axis for it, like so. <laughs> Come here, guys. Shawarma on us, your boys at VR Division. All your food. What else is really good? I am sure you must be familiar with the. Um, 
hummus, falafel. This. Ah. Oh. Look at this. This. This is one of the best things ever. Like falafel, hummus. There is also like a uh, fool we call it. But you eat this stuff, you sleep for three days. You know, it's so heavy. Oh my god, I should not look at this. I should not. Because I'm starving. I woke up super early today. Uh, super, super early. And I still didn't eat anything. And I'm like, I can't wait to eat now because... I'm going to order actually some Syrian food. So, <laughs> any of you guys is welcome. Oh, actually, modeling food tutorials with photos, photogrammetry and whatnot, that, that's interesting. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I'm sorry for making you hungry, Andy. Yeah, taco but giants. Exactly. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm familiar. Good stuff, guys food it's a global language everyone can agree food is very good just wait until you see the syrian desert but i'm gonna leave that for another stream because if we take a look at the des dessert we, we prepare it's it's haram bro <laughs> so good yeah, I think so, right? Let's focus on Unreal Engine, guys. Talking about food is not helping me much. <laughs> okay, enough with this. Let's look back at our reference. Let's make a quick pie chart, see if we can put it above our actor, what would happen. So let's go back to max. Select here. Let's make a cylinder. There is something messing with the performance on my BC, so let me close some stuff. <laughs> Just hit it my barbecue grill in early early. <laughs> Do you like mushrooms? I think like it is untapped territory. There is so much unexplored. Yes. Food is a global language. Absolutely. I was watching one of Joe Rogan's uh, episodes and they were talking about mushrooms and like how many different types of mushrooms there is. No, 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 wait, not Joe Rogan. They talk, the, the longest episode I saw talking about mushrooms, if you are familiar with the CG. CG cup. Uh, they were, this, what was his name? Um, Pablo Carpio they were making this uh, Amal this image I don't know if you can find it in, in uh, high quality and like they were googling mushroom pictures and there were so much weird stuff in mushrooms and like 50% of this image is composed of mushrooms it was so interesting to see how how they made it I think yes, I agree with you, it's untapped territory, there is so much going on in the mushroom world. <laughs> and today's episode in the kitchen with Yahya. Hummus, falafel and lahmacun. Uh, Jonathan, yes, that is fag at, at the end there, so it would help uh, hiding the horizon so without height fog you know 
and with height fuck massive difference and i have it set to a very low value and that's all basically almost everything i did there are so much still to do but for now it's a good start without fog it's impossible you know uh you need fog let's save and let's make this desk real quick so how many sides we have there are so okay we can have this chart and this chart let's detach this and let's detach this oh i messed up this so let's fix it real quick and let's wield let's fix this and fix these as well as well as this guy so bridging closing these caps give me a second guys Harun you need to move from here was looking for this under the modem it disconnects the internet looking at that but watch this he loved this stuff All right. There we go. Let's see how this looks again. I have a bad memory. Ah, oh, they they have the same size, but I think that's fine. pivot correctly so they all have the same pivot and let's also do this that's weird no problem Okay, Max, what was that? Let's make a new layer for this. Call it pie. Speaking of food. And... I don't know if this is the best way to... to do this but let's give it a shot see how this will look we just give it a reset yeah this is a very bad way to achieve this now it looks like a pie for real there are better ways to add support loops so 
I think if we add a chamfer modifier like so and then the depth we keep it at one mm. Really modeling I should practice much more so what else can I do let's redo this again make our lives easier Give this something like 64. Nildo, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you for showing up today, hanging with us. It was fun, buddy, talking about food and stuff. And I will see you, I will see you soon. Share textures. Hello there, everybody. How are you? Welcome to the stream. I am doing great. How about you? Let's close this. And let's just select this, detach, let's paste, cap this, cap this. I can't believe it's taking me this much to make this uh, pie chart. I'm gonna do just like Leon, the easiest way is if we add loop here, loop here, and oh wait, oh really, you are the reasons I started Unreal Archfields, that's amazing! I'm glad you started Unreal. <laughs> Thank you. This means a lot to us. I'm very glad to hear that. Well, in today's stream, we're not doing 100% Archfeast, but close enough. This is the scene we are working on. Futuristic scene by Leon Tucker. I'm just making his concept art into Unreal Engine. And chilling with you guys. I am trying to start the habit of hopefully streaming daily to i like honestly i love streaming but i just never find the time to do it so today is the first day and i ho hope to see you again at the same time tomorrow and tell me about your journey so far uh share textures how how do you find unreal engine so far Are you having fun any problems how did you find it Unreal Engine for the win. I am so bad in modeling. I am sure there are so many better ways to do this. I apologize for my bad modeling guys, but sometimes you have to be bad in some stuff and better in others. So that's that. Let's do Let's do this. Connect these guys together. And guys, 
in like 10 minutes actually I have to go because I have a meeting soon however I will keep recording what I'm doing because I don't think I'm going back live today but I believe the same time tomorrow I will be live and um, yeah so if you have any questions let's make this 10 minutes Q&A session I will be more than happy to answer anything you have on Unreal Engine. Share textures. It's fine for now. I didn't create an Archface project yet, but I have already created few material asset packs for the marketplace. Nice. Nice. Uh, if you would like to create something or like, uh, so there is the, if you go to Gumroad, my Gumroad, I have this file that I give to students. So I believe you watched the... If you didn't watch this playlist for like full uh, Archface tutorial, which is this the class number one, you can, which is this is the final image on uh, on ArtStation. You can try that, download it for free on Gumroad. This pack. So this is the final result for me, and this is what you get. You can assign your textures on on this pack here. So. It exists without furniture only because I can't give the furniture but many of these assets from Quixel some of these from 3d sky so if you go to Gumroad you will find this file to for download I would love to see your textures on this if you would like to do something so and I am planning on like getting these this actually from all students who work on this and then make something uh, crazy like cinematic with the, of the same apartment but made like 60, 70, 100 times, I don't know. So here's a link, check it out. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much, I'm glad you was out of them. That is the stuff. I'm very glad to hear that man, makes me really happy. So let's call this pi, give it a name, underscore pi chart. and rename it like this give it a quick whatever UV ma mapping modifier let's give it box and let's export this so pi chart and in Unreal let's click data math and import that pi chart Hmm. How does it look in the concept? Ah, based on the camera angle. Okay, so for this, we need to to come to here, for example. Right? Select this part. By the way, if you don't want to keep your selection almost like every time you select these three parts together, so let me show you. Like, you, if you don't want to select them all, all the time like this, when you make your selection, just press Ctrl G and it will make a group of your selection. So when you click, it will select all of them uh, at once. So groups are pretty handy. Use them. Save. And let's take your questions, guys, now before we go. And let's also do this. Uh, feel free to share a link of your textures on the marketplace on the chat here. Uh, I actually encourage that and you can also join us on discord So on on discord we have a community of 800 people now join us and you can share uh, as your finished work or work in progress and uh, Yeah, like if, if they are good, why not share them with others? So here for example, there is also a link for the community in the description we are thriving, we're growing with you guys. So join us and share your work, share everything. 
Hey, if you're doing Q&A, I try to import PNGs for particle systems made in Photoshop. Try TGA2, but they showed up fully filled without opacity. Any quick fix you know of? Thanks. So, I am not expert in, in particles and stuff, but uh, try. I don't know. I had once I had a problem with the PNGs as well. So I it what worked for me is exporting the PNG as like whatever PNG and uh, a mask for uh, for that uh, PNG sa as separate mask. I didn't bake it. A tray TGA for example, if you have the mask baked within that map, so that could help. And yeah, so I hope this helps. <laughs> Can you tell us about light map UV channels? I didn't understand it well. How do you adjust the second UV channel on 3ds Max? So, that's a good question. So, just let me do this quickly to, to show you something. I have a... Qu images that can help me uh, explain this. So, just let me find these images. However, when you export your meshes from uh, from 3ds Max to Unreal Engine with DataSmith, DataSmith is going to take care of the unwrapping for you. Uh, and just give me a second, I need to find that image. I think it's somewhere on Canva. Uh, sorry, should be here, yes. I'm preparing for live training sessions guys by the way and uh, so many of you signed up so stay tuned on the channel I will announce on the channel but preparing like all of this so like quick crash course in Archfiz and Unreal Engine and light maps and whatnot so answering to your question I hope this will help you Sakomaru I hope I don't pronounce your name correctly try to export the mask separately and I hope it will help. So, share textures, my man, on your question regarding light map UVs. When it comes to unwrapping in general, we are all familiar with uh, UV mapping, right? So when you have a 3D model, you would like to assign a texture on it. We unwrap it. So if it's a box, it looks like this, you know, uh, just normal unwrapping. And when we unwrap our meshes for textures, it is basically for light map UVs. It's the exact same process, but the main difference is UV islands should not um, let me check if you can see my screen by the way <laughs> yeah UV islands should not overlap on top of each other and you should only take the, the UV space so everything must be inside so if we if we have a wall or a box let's say everything must be inside that UV space so because uh, indirect lighting, so why do we bake light in Unreal Engine? Well, because indirect lighting is not supported by dynamic lights yet. It's kind of supported in, in ray tracing, but let's ignore ray tracing for now. So when you add your sun, what you get without a skylight is this, right? And the think of light maps as a second texture that is applied on your mesh right and this is this the best explanation okay S think of it as a second texture applied on your mesh that contains all the light mass calculations so if i want to explain light mass correctly there is no better way than to read it from the from the documentation this is why you need clean uh, unwrapping for the second channel so because of the indirect lighting is not supported uh, we need to bake the light for it so the light mass will create light maps with complex light interactions like area shadows diffuse infer well, I don't know how to pronounce this so it will pre-compute -co pre portions of lighting that is contributing uh, to your scene and bake that uh, in, in, inside of your meshes and the only lights are baked are the stationary and static uh, lights so that's that I hope this is somehow answers your question let's go back to my presentation again and think of this as the light map 
uh, texture. So this is a box. You can see here this is black because it's in, it contacts the floor be below it. It does not get any lighting information. So basically, sim simplify. The, if we simplify it, basically that's that's that. Like that's what's happening here. I should practice explaining this more. Sorry if this is not the best expl explanation. But did, did this answer your question or help you understand what's going on? I hope so. Awesome. Let's switch back here again. Okay guys, I should go now, prepare for my meeting and I will see you around the same time tomorrow. I hope this answers your question, share textures. If not, join us on Discord and I will explain this better, promise you. Uh, other than that, thank you for hanging, hanging around and thank you for showing up, all of you. And stay tuned for the upcoming videos. I will be remaking this complete. I com actually recorded everything again, just to, to remind you. And the complete process of recreating these images will, is coming soon to the channel. Once I finalize working on the master class in uh, Czech Gumroad, if you want to know more about that, we will be working on many more videos to come soon. And yeah, that would be it. Final chat here. Okay, thanks. You tell it nice. <laughs> I'm glad. So how you open second UV channel in 3ds Max? Wait, I'm going to show you that. You don't have to if you so here's the project by the way if you export this with data math just save as data math you don't have to open anything for that however if you want to unwrap manually inside 3d of max i have done this on this mesh earlier uh, you simply add you uh, an unwrap uvw uh, modifier in 3ds max and then you move to the second channel so usually you are in in the first channel you just simply move to the second uh, channel like so so let's and redo and this is what unwrapping looks like so this is the mesh right and this is how it looks like and once we send this to unreal engine which is here right when we bake the light if you would like to to take a look the light information is going to be saved here on top of what we have here on on this uh, on this uv islands here this is not the best unwrapping but i just did real quick to see how it will look uh that's that will be it regarding how to move the to make the second uv channel and yeah thank you guys i hope you found this useful today and i will see you tomorrow have a great one cheers <laughs>